In this video, I take a look at the Heathkit HM9 QRP Watt Meter. The HM9 QRP Watt Meter is an amateur radio accessory used to measure standing wave ratio, SWR, and transmitter output power. It was one of at least seven models of Heathkit Watt Meters that were offered between 1970 and 1991. The HM9 was one of the so-called Little Brown Box series of Heathkit amateur radio products. Breaking with their traditional green color scheme, they used a dark brown color. In the early 1980s, Heathkit was losing market share of its ham radio products, mostly due to competition from manufacturers of fully assembled products at similar prices to Heathkit's kits. They had also invested a lot of money in developing some products that had not been particularly successful, such as the SB-104, SS-9000, and HW-5400. Heath scaled down its amateur radio product line by introducing the Little Brown Box series of products that were simple, low-cost accessory products. As well as the HM9 QRP Watt Meter, other models that could be considered to be part of the series were the HD1418 Active Audio Filter, the HD1420 VLF Receiving Converter, the HD1422 Antenna Noise Bridge, the HD1424 Active Antenna, the HD1481 antenna switch, the HD1515 phone patch, the HD1530 touch tone decoder, the HD3006 RTTY tuning indicator, the HD3030 RTTY terminal interface, the HD8999 Ultra Pro CW keyboard, and the HFT9 antenna tuner. They were relatively successful and kept Heathkit in the ham radio market for a few more years. With its small size and 50 watt maximum power rating, the HM9 was aimed more at QRP or low power radios. It matched the styling of the Heathkit HW9 QRP transceiver from the same time period. Offered from 1983 to 1991 at a typical retail price of US $49.95, it was sold as a kit that the user would assemble. At some point the HM9A version was offered, which is believed to only differ in the color of the case. The HM9 was sold until 1992, at which time they exited the kit business entirely. I have one of the last Heathkit catalogs dated 1992, which has an insert listing the HM9, by that time the HM9A, at a last call closeout price of US $15. It had been selling for $59.95. The HM9 is a power meter and SWR bridge. It's wired at construction time for one of three frequency ranges. 1.8 to 30 megahertz, the HF bands, 50 to 54 megahertz, the 6 meter band, or 144 to 148 megahertz, the 2 meter band. It measures SWR up to 3 to 1 and power in two ranges, 0 to 5 watts and 0 to 50 watts. Making an SWR measurement requires a minimum of about 1.5 watts. It handles a maximum of 50 watts input and needs to use 50 ohm transmission lines. The power meter accuracy is plus or minus 10% of full scale. Controls are on the front panel, and SO239 jacks for input and output are on the back. Looking inside, most parts are on a single printed circuit board. Some parts are wired to the controls, switches, jacks, and meter. Note that one capacitor is soldered to the bottom of the PCB. A toroidal inductor is used in the SWR bridge circuit, something that wasn't available to older designs of the 1950s and 60s. This allowed making the unit smaller, simpler, and less expensive. There are no active components and the unit doesn't require any power source, just the radio transmitter or transceiver. Several resistor, capacitor, and inductor component values differ depending on the frequency range being built for. The kit included parts for all three options. The values of R1 and R8 were changed slightly in later revisions of the unit. I bought this unit on eBay in July of 2025 from a local seller. It was complete but didn't come with a manual. I was able to find a full manual in schematics online. It's the usual detailed manual that Heathkit was renowned for, almost 50 pages with detailed assembly instructions, operation, and circuit description. The unit was in good shape with some scratches on the case. Construction quality was good, and no obvious modifications had been done. Checking the component values used, 
It had been wired for the 144 to 140 megahertz 2 meter band option. I did some minimal cleaning of the unit, made the adjustments outlined in the manual, and tested it with two 2 meter band handheld radios, and it worked fine. After assembly, the unit requires some one time adjustment and calibration, which doesn't require any test equipment. Calibration is recommended to be done at the center of the chosen frequency band. For example, for the 144 to 148 MHz version, it should be done at 146 MHz. The first adjustment is to connect the unit to a transmitter and a 50 ohm dummy load. Key the transmitter, which should be set for a power level of 1.5 to 5 watts, and adjust the null trimmer cap for a minimum reading, ideally zero, on the SWR range. To calibrate the power meter, connect a transmitter or transceiver, again with 1.5 to 5 watts out, preferably closer to 5, and key the transmitter. Put the jumper in the cal position and note the meter reading. Now put the jumper in the normal position and adjust the cal trim pot to get the same reading on the meter. Alternatively, if you have an accurate RF watt meter to use as a reference, you can calibrate it to match the watt meter's reading. To operate the unit, connect a transmitter or transceiver to the input jack and an antenna or dummy load to the output jack. For SWR measurement, select the SWR range. Pull the SWR sensitivity switch out. Key the transmitter and adjust the SWR sensitivity knob for a full scale reading. Then push the SWR sensitivity knob in and read the SWR value off of the upper meter scale. The range is 1 to 3. For power measurement, set the mode to either the 5 or 50 watt range as desired. Key the transmitter and read the output power in watts from the associated meter range. In this case I'm using a Radio Shack HTX202 2 meter band handheld and seeing about 3.5 watts of output on the higher power level and less than a watt on low power, about what is expected with the battery I'm using. SWR is very close to 1 to 1. This is the only example I own of the Heathkit Little Brown Box series, which were the last amateur radio kits offered at the end of the kit era. I do have an SW7800 receiver, which is in a similar brown color. I have several units of Heathkit and non-Heathkit SWR and power meters, but none of them support the 144 to 148 MHz 2 meter band, so I'll keep this unit wired for that band where I can put it to use from time to time with my 2 meter handhelds.